Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have received this Rolex and actually we received this one has a lot of issues and uh, it's not working. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to try to repair this uh, beautiful Rolex that I received uh, from a, a watcher of the, of a follower of the channel. You can see the, the watch is in rough shape, like actually the crystal is quite scratched. Uh, so yeah, we, we do a quick polish on a crystal. Uh, and you see like now I will try, the watch is already open, you see like the crown is fully unwind. And I will try to wind the watch, but you see like the watch did not start and it's not starting. So yeah, there is something wrong with this Rolex and uh, yeah, we see if we can fix that. And you see I'm tapping on a watch, yeah, it doesn't want to start at all, it's fully jammed. So we see what we have inside, we're going to check quickly if the date is jumping at midnight. That's always a nice check to do. Yeah, so that's working. And we're going to check as well the quick set date, if that's working as well. Yeah, we see the date turning when it's uh, intermediate position with the crown. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use my custom Rotec tool just to open this uh, watch, the case back. I'll put a link down below if you want to go and buy some of these tools. They are great tool from Rotec and beautiful as well. So with a Rolex, case which is very special we can open that with a special adapter there we saw the seal was already was strapped as well and the case was not fully closed here so maybe somebody already had a look at it and we see now what we have inside you can see this probably hopefully a very nice Rolex caliber see on the case back there as well 1600 series so they just And inside, yeah, we can see this beautiful caliber from Rolex, 3035. Just checking there, the rotor, if there is any play on a rotor first. Yeah, but looks good, not too much play. So that's a good news. Issue is not coming from the winding mechanism, looks like it's working fine. Just checking there, see if the balance is not broken and balance staff is not broken, but it looks good, it looks in position, but it looks quite stiff actually to move the balance wheel. So we're just gonna take the movement out of the case now just by screwing like this screw I'm gonna turn now the mechanism first I need to release the winding stem turning the mechanism there just to align the screw inside the hole in front of the hole there perfect if you did not subscribe to the channel please just subscribe it will help the channel to grow a lot and if you like the video please click on a thumbs up as well click on a like button it will help to promote the video and share the passion to other watch lover and if you have any question as well just put some comment down below i would be very happy to look at your comment and uh, reply if you have any question just removing the hand there with my presto tool Just going to put them in this box again, just to make sure it's uh, nice and safe. We don't damage beautiful end. Just going to release the dial now. Just a couple of screws on the side, just to release the dial fit. And you see the dial is in beautiful condition. And again, like these Rolex dials, they are so nice. Like when you, especially when you don't have the crystal in front of it, like they are so nice. So I'm just releasing the dial now very gently with uh, my carbon tweezers. You're going to put the dial in this box. Nice and safe. It will stay nice and center. It will not move inside this box. It's a special dial box there. Okay, so we're going to do now, we're going to release, you see this date date ring there just gonna take it out very gently there we go and we're gonna start to dis disassemble now the mechanism we're gonna start to disassemble you see this calendar mechanism with this strange screw on the top there <laughs> Just taking the wheel, 
And actually, I should I be careful because yeah, underneath there is a jewel here, there. And it's just here, so I need to grab this jewel. Should have kept the tension off of the spring. Remove the hour wheel. And we should get access to the cannon pinion that we can remove with the Presto tool, which is friction mounted there. There we go. So well, now we move to the balance side and I'm going to remove the entire uh, winding mechanism, the automatic winding mechanism, if you want, that come on the top of the caliber. That is a Now that I remove the screws, should be able to lift up. There we go, perfect. So we saw the automatic looks like was working. So the issue on his watch, uh, it's not coming from there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to release the power from the watch. Obviously, if you want to work on a watch, you need to make sure like you don't have any power. So that's why I'm going to gently release the power you see there. Just checking the end check there on the balance balance wheel and it looks good. So the issue is not coming from there because if you have like like not enough end check, maybe there is too much friction in the balance and that's what could stop it. But no, it looks good. So the issue is not coming from there. So we have to carry on looking for where this issue is coming from. Okay, so gonna remove the balance. And you see there, I'm just checking the pallet fork and the pallet fork is clicking. So that's mean the power is coming through the pallet fork. So it looks like the mechanism, the rest of the mechanism is fine. It's not jam or else the pallet fork will not click. Um, so yeah, it's mean, yeah, we'll have to have a look further at the balance a bit later because it looks like the rest of the mechanism is working if the, if the power is coming to the pallet fork. So I'm just gonna disassemble obviously everything Again, just to make sure everything will get clean as well in a cleaning machine later on. That's uh, what the service is about as well, to clean all the parts, re-oil and re-grease. And you can see there, the train of wheel is, is turning pretty nicely, quite freely. So I guess the issue was coming from the balance wheel. Just going to remove the jewels there. Very tricky there. I'm using some Rodico to grab the cap jewel. And we carry on with the rest of the disassembly. <laughs> Removing the ratchet wheel, just checking the play there. It's fine, it's not too much play. Check the end shake as well, but it was not too much end shake inside the barrel arbor. Removing the click there with the spring. Removing the crown wheel and you see when we have three lines like this on a screw, it means it's river threaded. It's not always the case, like uh, it's not always three line on a screw which is river threaded, but on a crown when you have a screw right in the center, is river threaded. Uh, and you need to be really careful. So it's very nice from Rolex to put a, a three line on all the screws which are river threaded for sure. You will not forget like this. And uh, because if you unscrew it the normal way, you will ruin the thread. And obviously like, uh, yeah, that's a huge damage on the parts. You will have to re-thread it or change a part. So yeah, that's not good. You see quite a lot of grease under the part here. Looks like old grease, so I'm not sure when, when this watch was serviced from the last time. It's not very dirty actually, it's like no issue with rust or, or, or dirt, like so the seal was pretty good on the watch. It did not, uh, yeah, no moisture went inside the watch. So that's good. Remove it there, the plate on top of the barrel assembly there. Beautiful finish on the barrel assembly. Yeah. 
And now I'm removing the train of wheel bridge. We have all the wheel underneath. Okay, I just checked the end check before as well, and he looks fine on all the wheels, so no issue with the end check on his watch. No jewels had moved or uh, are not tight enough. We just check as well all the pivots from each wheel every time. See if there's nothing wrong, but it looks good. We have the escape wheel there. And we have the last bridge with the minute pinion underneath. Just removing the bridge. So jewels are fine as well. I did not see any broken jewels. So that's a that's a good news as well. I already had some broken jewels, like for example this minute uh minute like with the jewel which is on the minute wheel there. I already had some broken before. Uh but that's not the case on his watch. So I move to the die side and I will finish to disassemble the calendar mechanism with this ring around. That keeps the date wheel in position. Oh, the screw just jumped there. Uh, yeah, it went just underneath the movement holder. Perfect. Okay, just releasing now. That's the spring for the date to uh, have the the jump or more like the date stay in position with his spring just using like this arm there which is for the date jumping mechanism and now we can we still have a couple of parts so we have this Quick side dates as a wheel for the quick side date, and more or less after we are left with the parts for the keyless work. So we disassemble the keyless work. <laughs> and you see, like on a bench, like the parts are starting to pile up, and what I do always with the parts is I try to keep them in families, like in groups, if you want. Like, for example, now we keep all the parts from the keyless work together. And uh, when I will clean them as well, I will keep them separately. In uh, each compartment, I will put a, a group of uh, parts. And later on, when I will assemble it back again, I will keep the parts after cleaning together. Make it easier to find the parts rather than having everything mixed up. Um, so, yeah, even if you... Like, for example, if you are used to working on some calibers, like after you will find the parts very easily or the screws very easily. But it's always nice to keep them separately and well organized uh, to put them back together later. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm just... Oh, I just think I saw the issue. Look, the hack is broken there. Normally, it should be a hook at the end holding the hack. And I'm just shaking here. And that was probably the issue, like the hack was always in contact with the balance wheel and maybe stopping the balance from turning. So what we're going to do is, obviously we're going to buy a brand new hack on uh, on this watch, put it back, and uh, obviously the issue was coming from there because so far I don't see anything else uh, wrong with this watch. Uh, but the hack was definitely wrong, so yeah, we put a brand new one. Just taking out the jewels now from the balance. This one is from the balance assembly. And you see like this spring. Just opening the spring, grabbing the jewel. Just going to peg all the jewels as well, just to make sure there is no uh, dried up oil or grease on any of the jewels. With a piece of peg wood there. And obviously after there will be um, like the last cleaning will be done in the cleaning machine. Just place back, place back the balance there. Just 
just remove the top jewel there on a balance again opening the spring very gently because yeah they can jump and they can get out of place as well if you use too much force so you need to be careful grabbing the jewel so now we're gonna disassemble the automatic winding mechanism we have a C clips like we need to remove there here we go that we we can release the winding rotor underneath I managed to grab this C clip there and you see normally we should be able to lift up there we go so we have the big rotor here and now we need to disassemble the rest of the parts which is pretty simple on a Rolex the winding mechanism no spring no no not a lot of wheels you will see we can see on the top there the caliber number 3035 just need to find a spot there for this plate there we go and we have two reversing wheel okay so that's the parts that will help for the watch uh, to be wind in both direction when rotor is turning in both direction and we have the last wheel there basically yeah, it's very simple but very efficient as always with Rolex mechanism just gonna disassemble now the part the barrel assembly just gonna open it just gonna lift the lid and see what's inside just remove the barrel arbor quite tight always to remove this uh, barrel arbor <laughs> you see it's quite dirty actually inside so that's why we're gonna remove the mainspring and give it a full clean. Clean as well the clean as well the barrel. <laughs> okay, just unwinding the mainspring now. There you go. Looks like this almost there perfect fully and one mainspring looks good actually the mainspring so gonna put all the parts now in uh, small baskets and then we go through a, a cleaning through the cleaning machine you see all these parts again like i said i keep them in families like uh, together so like that they don't mix up and when we take them out as well we'll keep them in a box with the parts together that need to be together. Okay, so we're gonna start the cleaning. First, we will uh, clean the parts for five minutes in a cleaning solution. And uh, later we will put them through a rinsing solution two times for three minutes. And we will have some parts fully clean. I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a Patreon page. So you can find the link down below in the description. If you want to join my Patreon group, so I would like to thank my existing patrons and if you want to join my Patreon groups, you can go there, support the channel. It will help me a lot to put uh, better contents. And uh, yeah, I will uh, thanks you in advance to supporting the channel. So now I'm, uh, you see, rinsing like the parts and the last step, we put them into a hot chamber where we can uh, dry the parts. Part will be fully dry now and ready to be reassembled. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is gonna put like few parts, you see like all the cap jewel there, the reversing wheel, the pallet fork, and the escape wheel. We're gonna put them in the uh, li little uh, bottle there. It's, this is a epilam bottle, so we're gonna do an epilam treatment on uh, all these all of these parts. You see there, I'm just gonna turn them around and uh, submerge your parts inside the epilam. So the epilam will help to retain the oil uh, on the parts. We're going to put uh, some oil a bit later on. So I'm just drying the parts now. And you see I put a, a drop of oil on the cap jewel there, right in the center. 
when it's done, I can put back the chaton back on top. Perfect. Just gonna do the same thing with the other one, obviously, because these are the jewels for the balance balance wheel, and uh, yeah, we need to oil both of them, which go on both sides, obviously. Perfect. Okay, so now the oil, we're gonna place them back inside the balance. And you see we have the balance staffs that come nicely inside the jewel, inside the oil to be fully lubricated when the balance wheel is turning. Just gonna do the same thing on the other side. If I manage to close this spring, always tricky to close, especially under, under the camera, it's never easy. There we go, perfect. Just gonna put these cap jewels there, which are for the escape wheel. Just put it in position. I'm gonna close the spring there. Just gonna check with some hair if the balance is turning freely, it looks good. Just gonna check the air spring. Yeah, it looks fully concentric. And as well, always checking if it's fully flat, no bend in it. And yeah, it looks good on this watch. So now I'm just gonna remove the balance. Now it's fully clean and oiled. So obviously we'll put it back at the end of the assembly. Just placing the jewel there on top of the bridge. Again, this is a jewel for the escape wheel. We just put the other one on the dial side. That's the one that's gonna be on the balance side. And there I'm just gonna use my automatic oiler. It's much easier to oil this uh, cap jewel there. Just putting my automatic oiler and just put a drop of 9010, which is a very thin oil. Just gonna do the same for the jewels that we placed on the dial side. Now we're gonna focus on the mainspring and uh, reassemble the mainspring assembly. For this, I'm gonna use my uh, winding, winding uh, tools from Bergeon. So this is a, a special set to wind mainsprings. Just put the mainspring inside. And uh, now I can rewind it inside this tool. There we go, perfect. I'm just gonna remove now this uh, handle on top. And inside we should have a fully wound mainspring. Yeah, you can see inside the mainspring ready to go back in the barrel. But first we're gonna do, we're gonna grease the barrel. I'm gonna put some graphite grease on the wall being an automatic watch, you will have the mainspring sliding on, si on the side of the barrel there. So as when well, you use this uh, special grease, this graphite grease, and putting some uh, mainspring grease on the bottom of the barrel there before we insert the mainspring. And I can place back. I'm just gonna use this tool actually from Rotec and I'm just gonna use it a, a different way compared to what I was doing before. And uh, I just checked a video on uh, Orotech and that's actually the way they use it. Uh, so maybe I was doing it wrong for actually a long time, but it looks like it works much better like this. So I just put the lid back on top there and actually I press it from the top like this. And that's it, it's closed. I had to use a lot less force and it looks much nicer this way. Okay, so now I'm just gonna use the tool because what we need to do is um, oil the barrel arbor on both sides, obviously. Just gonna oil now the minute pinion and we're gonna start going to reassemble now all the parts on the main plate. Just placing it back, oiling the top pivot point there as well. 
Just placing now the train of wheel, starting by with the escape. Placing now the other wheels in the in the jewels. Just gonna add some uh, oil there on a pivot point from the center wheel. I'm gonna place after the wheel inside the center hole there. There we go. And the last wheel that come on top. Again, just gonna align it, you see, trying to see where is the jewels. And just align it. Yeah, perfect. Looks like it's in position there. Okay, so now we're gonna, gonna do the same thing and put the bridge, align everything. And for you, for this, I like to use a, a little technique, which is just gonna tap, you see, on the side. And up, you see there, some wheels fell in, inside the holes in a, in a pivot hole. But the escape is not in position there, so I'm just gonna lift it up ever so slightly, move, move the wheel and just tap it again. You see now, it looks like everything is in position. And yeah, when I turn, everything is turning. So that's good. Just gonna put the first screw. Keep everything in position. And the second one. And we have a train of bridge fully assembled. Just move on the die side now. We're gonna put the keyless work. Assemble the keyless work. Just gonna insert the clutch here. There we go, it's in position. Just gonna put a brand new hack, and you see compared to the one which is on a mechanism, you have this hook at the end there where I have my tweezer. And this is the part that was broken, so obviously the hack could not work. Because you will see there when we're gonna, gonna put a setting lever there, which is connected as well to the, uh, to the hack. Just put a spring on top there. <laughs> and now let's check if the hack, yeah, and you see the hack moving there. Perfect, so that's working. Okay, I will reassemble the rest of the keyless work now. First time oiling all the pivot point there. I need to be oiled. Obviously, the oiling, like I said every time, is like two purpose is uh, to have like less friction inside the watch on some of the point, and uh, as well to make sure the part don't wear between each other because you have a lot of parts which is metal against metal, so can wear and the wear can lead to failure. So yeah, you that's why you need to do uh, like on your engine from from your car. You want to change the oil regularly because, yeah, the oil will become uh, dirty. And if you don't do it at one point, obviously, it will create some issues on your on your engine. Same on a watch, like, because these calibers are, like, small engines. Uh, so, yeah, you want to change your oil at a regular interval. And that's why you need to do a service on your mechan mechanical watch, like, like, let's say, every five, five to eight years. If you use it uh, regularly, if you don't use it regularly, obviously, you can do a bit later on, but uh, yeah, that's very important because yeah, some parts can break and especially on Rolex, uh, parts can be very expensive to change. So yeah, you want to, you want if you want to maintain your watch in good condition and in uh, original, uh, fully original condition, you need to do a service like uh, quite regularly as it, as it is recommended by the manufacturer. Uh, yeah, to avoid any issue. Okay, just checking now the keyless work, see if everything is working on all the different positions, and yeah, it looks good.
Okay, so now I'm putting the rest of the mechanism, the barrel arbor there, which we remember you, we put, we uh, disassemble the spring and uh, rewind the main spring inside, fully greased and oiled. And now I just secure the bridge in position. Okay, oiling there, you see the barrel arbor coming in contact with the bridge. And gonna place now all the rest of the parts which go on top of this bridge, starting with the click. I really like actually this caliber, the 3035. Uh, very nice, obviously, uh, improvement compared to the caliber that was before this one and even I compared to the 3135 I found this caliber like uh, obviously there is a lot of similarity but easier and simpler very robust and uh, yeah that's again it's very uh, difficult to understand if you didn't work on a, on a Rolex movement but yeah you, you feel and you see the difference compared to uh, other mechanism and that's what makes the reputation of Rolex as well the parts are thick, heavy, like a lot of jewels everywhere, uh, more than usual. Um, so yeah, obviously there is other manufacturers that make great movement as well. But yeah, you can see the, the Rolex movement. They are made to last and uh, very robust. So yeah, that's, uh, I really like to work on this. And obviously the 3035, you will see a lot of these calibers. Like obviously this one is on a day just. Uh, but actually, it's exactly the same caliber that you will find in a Submariner. You, they use the 3035. And even like the caliber, the GMT calibers, for example, that you will find uh, on the GMT or the Explorer, Explorer 2, they are exactly the same base caliber, the 3035 base, but obviously with few added parts for the GMT function. Um, so yeah, I found it's quite clever as well um, to, to make only, if you want, one type of caliber for, for a lot of watch during one one era. Um, it means that they manage the manufacturing process, the quality control as well is much easier rather than having like a lot of different caliber and you need to change the setup on your machine and the setup on the quality control as well. It's, yeah, it's better if you do it this way, I guess. So it's very smart for Rolex and obviously as well. Uh, you can argue that uh, Rolex watch are too expensive and I agree they are expensive for what they are um, but as well Rolex is very clever to do always the same caliber it's much more cost efficient uh, to do always the same parts and uh, not have a, a lot of different caliber to manufacture um, so yeah I guess that's why Rolex is uh, one of the and the biggest watch company as well and doing great results is as well some strategic choice that they make like this one for example to have a almost a mono reference core if you have a um, a three hand or a gmt function on a watch it will be all the time the same caliber okay so now i'm just placing back the balance assembly and this is a quite a tense moment because you remember the watch was not working so let's see now we just change the hack didn't see anything else and see if the watch want to start or no. Just gonna place. Oh yeah, it started straight away. Like uh, nice, that's very nice. And it looks like it's beating very nicely. So the hack was definitely a problem. So, but we're gonna put it on a time grapher and see if uh, the watch is uh, working nicely. And you can see straight on a time grapher, the amplitude is quite high at 270. I did, did not oil the jewel there, it's just to show you the difference before and after oiling. So before oiling, you see 270, error of 0 0.4 that can be adjusted. And now I'm just going to oil the jewels under my microscope. I have a new camera under the microscope, so I hope you will like some of the footage that I will do with this uh, microscope uh, camera. Just oiling all the jewels there with different type of oil. And after oiling, I would just put the watch straight back on a time grapher. And you see, straight away, the, the watch gained like uh, 10 degrees on amplitude. Now it's around 280. And obviously, I will let it run a bit. And uh, the amplitude should even be higher after that. 
Okay, so now that the movement is working, gonna assemble the complications. So the calendar mechanism on its watch. Remember, I need to put this long arm there. We have a jewel put later on. I'm just gonna oil different pivot point there. I'm gonna put a calendar mechanism. Just gonna keep some tension there, and I'm just gonna grab. You see a tiny jewel there. Then I put in position and still keeping the tension, just put this calendar driving wheel on the mechanism. And when it's in position, I will be able to release the tension. There we go with the jewel coming against the cam underneath. And actually there, I just did a mistake. I did not realize I forgot to put the how wheel. So I have to take out the calendar wheel again. Just put the hour wheel. And now I can place back the calendar wheel back again on the movement, again with keeping the tension and releasing it while it's in position. I will assemble like the quick side date mechanism. Just placing the screw there with a drop of oil on the shoulder, which is a rotating point for these parts. Just remember, place this spring here in position. And we have this uh, ring where we're going to put later the day disc in position. Just need to align it on the hold. And we can secure it, obviously, when it's aligned with the screws. Perfect. Just put now the day disc in position and you see you have some jewels on the side there again to reduce the friction and I'm arming the spring there against the teeth. There we go. Perfect. Closing this little screw there, and we see we have a quick side date function which is working. And we're just gonna check as well if the day jumping is working. Just go doing like if I'm changing the time right now. And at one point, we should see the disc and the day jump. Perfect. So we can put back the beautiful dial. Just gonna secure it there. And you see there, I'm just changing the time until the date jump. Yes, that's the date, just jump. So I just need to align the hand on midnight. And now I'm gonna press it in position. Very gently, until it's sitting fully flat there with the shoulder. And I'm just gonna align as well the minute hand to midnight. Just gonna check the day jump. I like to have it like five minutes before, five minutes after midnight. Oh yeah, just like two minutes before, so that's perfect. So now I just can put the second end in position. Just gonna press it as well, ever so slightly. There we go. Now I'm just gonna focus on the case. Just gonna remove the bezel there. And you see, wow, it's quite rusty there. So just gonna take the crystal. That will, I will polish it under my polishing machine and uh, remove as much rust as I can with a piece of pegwood there. And uh, we're gonna put all these parts inside my ultrasonic machine, obviously, just to clean them fully. And I will put a discount card down below in the description as well for the cleaning machine. So if you wanna buy the cleaning machine, you will have a 5% discount on the, on the website. It's a great machine to clean uh, watch parts, bracelet as well if you need.
Okay, so now it's fully clean. The crystal is polished. I'm just gonna press fit back the bezel in position with my Rotec tool there, my custom press. And I'm just gonna put brand new gaskets and O-rings uh, in on the watch. So I'm just gonna lubricate them in Molycote there first. I will help uh, the joints like to be uh, even more watertight. Removing old ones and inside this crown, they were fully, fully dry like uh, gaskets. So yeah, that's not good. The one in a tube was not looking too bad actually compared to the one in a, in a crown. But yeah, every service, brand new, brand new ring, brand new gaskets. So I put the one in a tube first, just press it inside. You can see now it's nicely in place. I will put the one inside the crown, go all the way to the bottom of the crown there. I will just press it, press it in, fully down. And the last one on the case back, obviously to seal the back of the watch. Just gonna use my new tool. I have uh, some vacuum now and some uh, hair so I can blow as well. So I'm just doing some vacuum to remove any dust inside the crystal and blowing some air on the dial just to remove any dust or particle just to have a very clean dial before I recase everything. Just push him back in the case. Just putting back the crown and winding stem there. Just gonna screw now the screw inside just to make sure the caliber stay nice and secure. And we can focus on the automatic movement. Just reassembling the reversing wheel. Just placing now the second reversing wheel there in position. You see quite simple, this automatic, I, I, I like it, yeah. So placing the bridge on top, just gonna align all the screws. Now I'm going to oil the big rotor there, the winding and just going to place this mechanism on top there with you see a huge jewel actually in the center here. Just going to place back the C-clip and the last pinion that go on top there, which is actually kind of a rectangular shape that I need to align that will drive the reversing wheel obviously. Perfect. And now I can put the entire assembly back on a mechanism. Very gently aligning everything. Perfect, looks good there. Still not aligned and when it's those, we can put the screws Actually, three screws on this uh, mechanism there. Gonna all the jewels, and basically, I think uh, with the assembly, that's it. We can put the case back on the watch. I'm just gonna use again my Orotech tool there. You see, just gonna secure the case inside the clamp there and fully close the case back. Just gonna demonetize the watch. And I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have my own website. So if you want to see some uh, and buy some of the watches that I'm restored on the channel, you can go on the website. I will put a link down there on, a, on the top right corner and down below in the description. Uh, as well, if you want to send me your watch, like for example, this Rolex that somebody sent me, 
for service, you can send me your watch and I would be very happy to service uh, to service your watch. So if you have any question, please contact me on my email or put a comment down below in the video. And you can see there, after a while, the watch, I adjusted the bit error is perfectly at zero. The watch is just around zero second and the amplitude went back up to 290. So that's a perfect, perfect running watch uh, for a watch I was not working initially. Very happy with the result. So I hope you like this service and this restoration and I see you next time for my next video. Bye bye.